We're going. Check. You there? Check, check, check. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back to the Philly Journal podcast. My name is Dante. I'm Our guest today is an artist from New Jersey. Uh, he drove all the way up here. Thank you so much for doing that uh, mm -hmm. from Atlantic City. But before I tell you who he is, I want to tell you what he does. He's a rapper. He's a singer. He's a master of ceremonies. He's a facilitator. He's a connector. He's a guy who commits. He's a guy who feels deeply and then makes things to reflect those emotions. And he's a guy who lives his life as an artist. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Bugs. Yeah, what's good, man? What's Thank you for having me yeah, on, brother. Yeah, yeah, Appreciate yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. A master of ceremonies. I might have to put that in my, uh, put it in my, my bio, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll master you. of ceremonies. That's fire. The, uh, the first time, I, I hate that every time mm -hmm. just before we start, I know that there are things in my seat that I want to adjust and I don't do anything about it. Oh, yeah, man. And then, yeah, all the noise <laughs> I just comes. did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to quickly talk about how I know you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I point a lot. And I I'm apologize. always interested in that. Like, how do you know me? Typical yeah. artist ego. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a cool thing also. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's nice to reflect on, you know, connection. Mm -hmm. um, I'm... I met I met you for the first time, I believe, at the event down at a uh, Luke Witherspoon spot. Oh yeah, you remember? Yeah, what is yeah. that? Is there's their Eden. name for that? Eden. E yeah, Eden. Yeah, yeah. Great vibes. It was mm -hmm. amazing. Um, I don't know what the level of uh, discrepancy is to talk about those events because mm -hmm. it was very exclusive and it was really vibey, but I can, I can. Well, the location is not there anymore, so it's gone. It, we can talk about. Yeah. 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 All right. So mm -hmm. let me tell you something. I moved on to better things. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 All right. It wasn't shut down. No, no, no. They, they basically moved to another spot. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. They, they were already transitioning with that. So they just slowly did it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I pulled up, I saw Luke, I met him before. He didn't know me from a can of peas. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Cool dude. I walk in. Luke's a shit. He's so cool. Mm -hmm. On either side of me, there are two tables. And it, it was my favorite part of the whole night. Mm -hmm. Just full of cannabis. Yeah. It was the best part. I walked mm -hmm. in and I, I got a couple pre-rolls. And then the, mm -hmm. the, the next best part was there was a room dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is, this is fucking vibe. Yeah, that, cool. that's, that's what it's about with the underground shit. I mean, yeah. it's not illegal. It's marijuana. You can it, just, I mean, it's also New Jersey. Yeah. So. so it wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. It was literally about the vibes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everything that was done there was, was so awesome. Yeah. And that's what I like about underground, quote unquote, underground shit like that because you can't do that at other, I mean, you can, but yeah. it has to be like fully sanctioned, like that's right. fully like, completely guarded down and, yeah. it, and it just doesn't have it's like a house party yeah and i was never the guy to go to the bar yeah. i was like the second i turned 21 i went to the bar one time and i was like yeah this is whack whose house are we going to yeah which basement party let's invite at? 20 people yeah. actually let's invite 40 rappers yeah and, and see what the fuck yeah happens. and then the cypher happens mm -hmm. yeah yep. so i so that that was the first night i just peaked frick mm -hmm. that was the first night that uh I, I met you and you were you were emceeing. Mm -hmm. that, that you were running an open mic. I was an open mic. Yep. Yeah, it was it was incredible. And um, did you perform that night? I did I not. I, I did remember not. you performed somewhere though. I I, I performed at Spit Philly. Yeah, and, and, dude, and I, you ripped it. Dude. Oh, thank you. I, I have like, jokes about it in my whoa. head. I always I always said uh, I I either should have started earlier mm -hmm. or just or just not gone at all. <laughs> the the vibe was just like it, it was. I think. Mm -hmm. CSW mm -hmm. and uh, which I had him on the pod uh, mm -hmm. last week uh, in his episode is coming out Monday but uh, CSW and the whole um, organization crew they, mm -hmm. they popped out that night yeah. and it was just crazy crazy hype and then I came in and they I always bring great energy great energy and mm -hmm. I came in with just the two of us cover yeah. Which like it was no, that it, was dude, it was great sonically that shit was yeah epic. That's yeah what I'm saying that's like that's the thing about the open mics It's different between the shows so um when I was doing ciphers back in the day, I would do that to find the people that I should have perform at a show. However, yeah. you go, rap in a cipher, I know you can perform. But I switched it after the pandy because two, three years going by, there's a lot of new artists that were 16 that are now 19 yeah. that found themselves. And it's about performing now. It's not about ciphers as much as they're dope and they can go viral. We're ta I'm talking about the whole cipher because what people 
do now is they take their clip, they put it on Instagram, and yeah. the, the views get all spread out. Yeah. So the views don't go to the actual cipher itself. So the dynamic of me searching for new talent or dope performers changed, and it mm. turned into the open mics. So all the open mics, I looked at my favorite performers yeah. and put them on a show. So instead of one song, they could get 15 minutes. And, and for example, though, you, like, there's a couple events I wanted you at, but um, they just didn't work out due yeah. to changing of stuff, you know. I was at the height of my uh, – we'll, we'll, we'll get there. But I, mm. yeah, the, the timing was, was not right. Yeah, yeah. And that's why – and yeah. I will never force it. I'm, yeah. Like, if that's not – like, especially for what I'm trying to do – I'll just won't throw the show. Yeah, you know, I just won't. I, and I haven't thrown a show for like two, three months because I'm waiting for the right time to come again. Wh which I admire about you because you're 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 diligent and you're also intentional about the things that you do. So I appreciate that you take your time mm -hmm. in a, in a in a culture that it's all about hustle, hustle, hustle. Which hustle is good, mm -hmm. but you know you want to do things with intention. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I I met you that night. That was crazy. Was it you that was standing on top of a wall? Or that was, was probably K Gold. Somebody was on the top Stand of wall, and this wall. was after this was. I don't, I don't fuck with heights, <laughs> so it was not me. So it wasn't you. Mm -mm. I, I I only popped in for a little bit. My social meter like is on the like, side wall, like when you walk in on the right. Yeah, that was definitely Kegel. Okay, yeah. it was nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I popped out quick. I can only do so much of big crowds. Uh -huh. So uh, I popped in, popped out, had a good time. Mm -hmm. Um, but I saw that I think on your story, perhaps after I left, because I had a little bit of FOMO. I was like, yeah. I wish I didn't leave, but I just know I know myself mm -hmm. so well that. Had I stayed, it wouldn't have been enjoyable. That ha I mean, I don't have anything with crowds at all, but I do notice at a lot of events, I take huge chunks of time to myself. Yeah. Like, I'll go to the bathroom four times just to look at myself for yeah. a second. Get centered. And to, like, yeah, to, like, because there's so much interaction happening, especially when you're hosting an event. But I'm saying even a race out at a Sixers game or mm. something, I find that I break away from who I'm with and roam a little bit. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, it's like, oh, like I get uneasy sometimes, but okay. it's more it's more about that space, just needing to yeah. like enjoy the moment yourself versus sure. like making uh, that's what it is, I guess. I'm I'm making sure everyone else is like having fun. I love watching people figure out their thoughts in yeah. real time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm not about to have that happen, so I'm walking away. That I'm going good. for a walk yeah. And, and yeah. 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 But um but that's what happens. Like if I get in my head when I'm with the group of people, I'll literally like I'll feel that. Sure. And, and I will walk away from it, you know. Yeah. So that's um, and that's one of the things what you just pointed out. That's why I love these two because it brings out depending on who you're talking to, yeah, brings out a completely different answer than you would usually think about. That, that yeah, it's it's very true. But the the thing is, the thing I love about myself and a lot of people that I surround myself with is, uh, real knows real. Mm -hmm. So even in a crowd of people that are going crazy and having a good time, I like when I met you, I knew I was like, this is a guy that I would want to stay in touch with mm -hmm. for no reason other than you have a great energy, yeah. you know? Um, and so anyway, so then I saw you again at spit Philly, which is what we were talking about. And mm -hmm. that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that, that was pretty much it. We messaged a few times. I was, I was supposed to do a show yeah, at uh, the boiler room. Before. Cause of that, like, when I saw that, I was like, dude, yeah. I need that. Yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a little, um, I was a little disappointed back then at myself. Um, but you know, I told you my story and yep. that was at the height of that. That was probably oh, okay. like, that was probably like, uh, a month before yeah so um and that's yeah. the thing dude you never know like that's like the thing with me because of what i portray and when i post things people think that that's like where i'm at at the moment yeah. as far as songs sometimes usually it is because i've been like posting live performances of new songs so yeah. like usually it's that but i don't want to i don't even want to do that as far as like it's weird because everybody feels it like we're talking about. Mm. Everybody feels those emotions. Yeah. And nobody wants to be like a quote unquote broken record saying this thing like, oh, I'm sad again, guys. Like, it's not even about that. Because from an artist's perspective, it's just about expressing it. Sure. So I don't talk about it. I'll put it in the music, obviously. But there, I think everybody reaches a breaking point eventually. Yeah. And it happened to me when I was really young, like when I was 12. And then it happened in the beginning of the pandemic like right yeah. before the pandemic but um but it stemmed from mourning mm -hmm. like i had never lost anybody in my life so there was a moment where the the five people that i envisioned like my dreams coming true with like popping champagne at the yeah. top of the mountain with they all died within like a year or two span and it's wow. like one by one all different reasons 
And before that, like I said, I'm 27 years old and no one had died in my life yet. Mm. Not not a grandma, my cat and dog, which was hard. Yeah. But the cat was a week before that. So mm. so it was like con- contemplating what the point of everything is Sure. was all I could think about. And that's why I do events in the first place is to bring people together and make them forget about these things. Amazing. But it turned into me nonstop thinking about those things. So it was hard to be the smiley host guy. Yeah. And um, that's like when I said on Instagram, it's it's not on my page, but it's on my reels. You can scroll down and it's the Major Van Winkle video because that's exactly how I felt. And I didn't know how to say it, but he said it. And so I posted that with a caption reiterating my feelings about it. And um, yeah, finding out that everybody feels the same was a weird. Yeah. Was a weird experience because, like I said, it's not what was me. Everybody feels it, but learning that somewhat I felt like should have helped, kind of like you re- referenced, like it helped you speaking yeah. to him. But it actually, like, just because I'm an empath at that same time and the sympathy, all of that built up with mine, because I just want everybody to be happy. It's like it was just a fear of like sadness consistently. Mm. Like mm. at the end of the day, everything's going to be sad mm. no matter what. So. My first tattoo, I actually got it representing that. It says it's a sad, it's a sad face on the back of my neck that says super sad. Mm. My intentions when I got it was to cross out sad down the line when I'm not anymore, which is actually coming up soon, hopefully. Sick. <laughs> but Sick. um, but the super sad represents that. It's just that at the end of the day, we all do decay in different ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're all gonna go, and whoever goes last is gonna feel all that. Yeah. So that's like that's the never ending impending doom type thought mm. and just to beat that is to pain about it mm. that's why i make music because instead of getting in the thoughts i can make something negative positive with sure. expression so like a sad love song lyrically i'll put it over a fast dance beat yeah sad songs it's like yearning for love mm. but i'm dancing about it yeah so it's like that's how i flip the emotions wow but in the moment when i when it hit me in real life i was like oh shit yeah music doesn't do anything for yeah me right now nothing nothing did anything so um yeah i just i basically it was a lot of looking in the mirror again which is honestly one of my favorite things to do <laughs> straight up that's what i love looking at myself well have you ever looked at yourself like gone like that's yeah it's it's uh it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing but i gotta say welcome to the fucking podcast <laughs> bugs is here that was awesome mm-hmm. uh it, it, I want to say first, thank you for your vulnerability. I think it takes a, a special person to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. and um, you know, in the spirit of what I'm trying to do here, this is exactly what I'm looking for, which is let's talk about the things that people feel shame yeah. to talk about, um, so we can fight shame. Yeah, the kryptonite to shame is uh, human connection, and how do we do that? We tell stories. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're here today to do and, yeah where it and, all stems from when you yeah, said well, yeah, yeah when you said the word shame the first thing that came to my mind was laziness yeah which is interesting talk about that what do you mean in perspective of my shame stems from that so if, as an artist i create really quickly like i can make something on the spot and because of that i don't work a lot if you if you see what i mean because i can create an album in a night yeah i won't create for the next three days okay and that's like stems from laziness with the work ethic. But then I'm also doing so much other shit. So it seems like I'm doing like that I'm not lazy, but I know that I'm lazy still. Mm. I know I can do quadruple the amount that I do. I could drop way more, be better with marketing, learn more every day. Yeah. So like a lot of my shame of where I am in my life, artistically, mentally, stems straight from laziness. Yeah. So when I read the word shame in the email, first word was like lazy lazy wow and it flashed like wow yeah yeah but i'm aware of that and it's up to me to fix that you know what i mean so yeah being aware of that is important it's definitely a um it's a process and i share a lot of those same sentiments uh i um and i'm gonna speak on behalf of myself and you if you want to agree that's that'd be great Mm -hmm. um i find a lot of people who have endured trauma at an early age from someone who was meant to be their caregiver mm-hmm. um, that was th- there and, and forgot the, the nurture part. Uh, a lot of those people typically, you know, tie their self-worth to their productivity. Mm-hmm. And there are these moments of uh, rest that we've earned and, and that we're allowed to have. And we feel guilty 
I, I feel guilty like mm -hmm. uh, being in bed past 5.30 a.m. And I wish I was joking, mm -hmm. but I'm not. And yeah. so and so sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll try to find stupid shit to do. Like I'll organize my pencil cup. Yeah. You know, just to keep my anything. mind, anything, shave. Yeah. 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 Anything. Any, mm. Should I shave? Were you saying that? No, no. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate you sharing that because I, I, I feel the same way and, mm. it, and it's a, it's a tough thing. So, um, I want to, I want to stop going to bed at five thirty. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. You're fucking up your that. circadian rhythm, man. You yeah. Get, there's, you gotta, some, there's something about that. For you sure. got, you got to get that there definitely put is. together. Mm -hmm. So I want to, I want to, uh, I want to dive in to your, your story. And I, I, I would love for you to talk a little bit about, um, how you got started. What is the genesis of your creation? Mm -hmm. Not, not your, not your born creation, not yeah, when yeah, you were yeah. born, mm -hmm. but of why you started to create. Word. Yeah. Um, so it definitely stems from, I was always writing poems, yeah. like in fourth grade, fifth grade, like, you know, when you're passing notes to girls in school, I was, yeah. I was giving them poems and shit, or, like asking them to the dance with poems. Fucking, so I always wrote like love stuff like that. And, um, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do until I graduated high school. And, um, all in high school, I danced. I was a okay. battle dancer, like crump cool. and pop lock, like that. That's what I did before I made started making rap. So I was creating with that. And I, we talked earlier in the dance studio. Once I didn't have a mirror to like really yeah. see the moves that I was trying to create or connect yeah. for like freestyling and stuff, I just wasn't able to do it anymore. And um, also I used to break dance, but I hit my head on the diving board, and I never flipped again. <laughs> I get like, Real, like you can't do it no it just bugged me out like oh, it okay. psyched me out and i can't like i used to spin on my head and do all that shit but like i'm terrified of it now wow and that was when i was 12 so wow. yeah so that changed that but i that's when i started pop locking and doing more footwork and shit like that Got it. but um but when i graduated high school i actually wrote a verse because i never i had never really gone to house parties during high school and shit because it was just like i was the wigger I was the mm. white kid that wore a big shirt. Mm. So I only had a small group of friends mm. and was judged by everybody else. But the second you get out of high school and you go to a party. It's different. Oh, you're pretty cool. It's yeah. the biggest backhand compliment you can ever get. Like, yeah, motherfucker. We could have been <laughs> all been friends. I've always been this way. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking assholes. <laughs> but, um, but this is, yeah, this is before I started the ciphers and shit. I wrote a rap, like a 16 bar rap. And because I knew at the party, at the house party, there was going to be a cipher. Like, okay, all the, this was when circles of rappers would was just happening. Yeah, and I wrote that, I wrapped it there, and everybody freaked the fuck out. Like, like it, like bigger than a break dance. Like, was oh, it like, oh, white boys got bars, or was it like, this is good? Yeah, yeah, no, like, yeah, it was like one of those things. You know what I mean? Just a crazy pandemonium, and they wanted me to keep rapping, but I had yeah. no more raps. Yeah. So that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna go home and write a couple more raps and. A month later, I moved to Arizona. Literally, when I was, I just turned eighteen, and I was. It was literally to find myself as a musician. Wow! So I went there. My sister was already living there. She's like seven years older than me. So when I went there, a couple blocks from the University of Arizona, not going to college but partying with all the kids there, I just experienced a bunch of things. I needed stories. I needed yeah. to party. I needed yeah. to find my sound, what I would talk about, my voice, how I liked it. Yeah singing rapping you know anything so so i just experienced life for a year out there wow and um just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote literally was good. that was my college yeah it was amazing okay it cool. was so fucking cool. fun but that's what started it it stemmed from that first house party and people's reactions wow that pandemonium of that but um when i was in arizona and doing that i came back and this was like when the first bet cypher was dropped okay like 2012 who was in that it was like the one with Eminem. Was Jada Kiss Slaughterhouse in was in it. It was like, it was that one where they went section to section and shit. So okay. that actually stemmed the idea to start the ciphers town to town. Wow. So I did like the Marlton cipher. Collingswood is where I graduated high school. And then I went, did Camden. And after the Camden cipher, it was off from there. You were going. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but that was, that's where I had the idea of bringing people together. Okay. Because like I saw at house parties how I could bring people together because I threw house parties. So I knew how to do that. So throwing a cipher is the same thing. Just invite the best rappers in the town mm -hmm. and have people vote online. And like I said, this was before everybody was taking shit to their in individual things. Yeah, everybody yeah. had to see the rap on the YouTube. Yeah. 
So all the views were going there, and it was building a community. And that's that's really what started it. But um, musically, I got stuck as the cypher guy because okay. it's a lot of work. It's yeah, a yeah. lot of work. So you're putting a lot of your energy into that. Yeah. yeah. And then when I realized that, that's when I started really focusing on the sound of my music again. And I fell back in love with it. And um, that what inspires me is doing something different all the time. So like that's why I make every genre. So that's why I do like shows. You also sing R and B. Yeah, that's wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it's great. <laughs> I do everything. I don't even know because every time I perform, I do something different. Yeah. So I don't even know. I don't remember what you saw from me in as far as live goes. Uh, live, I saw you do a rap at Spit Philly, and mm -hmm. I. I, I I, I'm not going to front. I don't remember what the song was, mm -hmm. but it was good. And you right. you were doing like a, like there was like a, <laughs> there was a jig that was happening. And if I, I get in my buggy vibe, yeah, yeah, you were, yeah, you were. That, that's a great way to describe you <laughs> yeah. were in the buggy vibe. Your mm -hmm. hair was down. You were vibing out. Like, you know, everybody. It, it was you create such a great atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The way you facilitate things. That's why I made sure to call you a facilitator because mm -hmm. it is not. It's not a God given gift to do what you do. It's something that's practiced and, yeah. and learned, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Reading the room. Yeah. It's like crowd work as a comedian. Knowing who to invite too. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's I I always mix up the vibes, but yeah. yeah, it's very important, like, okay, I need this person here yeah. at least. I at least need them and them. If those two come, then yeah. it's good because it's good for a mixture like that. What was it what was it like starting out doing house parties? Was it ever nerve wracking for you or were you just so uh sold out for this cipher idea mm -hmm. that nerves never came into play? Well, it was like I said, it was weird in high school because I was friends with the kid like I was selling all the kids weed that weren't yeah, friends yeah. with me. But Shout when out I came yeah, when I came <laughs> back and started the ciphers and they got a buzz Obviously, half of it was like local stardom. Sure, like, sure. Half of it was they just wanted to be friends with Bugs. And then the other half was like, oh, you actually are cool. So I read through those lines right away. Yeah. You know, as far as just like the ciphers inviting the right people to come yeah. party. But that doesn't mean they're good friends. That means it's good. How good, can you tell? They're good partiers. And yeah, you can at that age. Like, yeah. When How can you tell now? Um, What's your indicator? Kind of what you said. There, there is a real recognized real th thing yeah. that happens, and that's yeah. a hard vibration thing to describe. Yeah, but that's really what it is. I mean, and I didn't even realize it uh, today, but I'm on your Instagram right now, and uh, you're you you have an audience, my friend. Mm. You have an audience uh, over eight thousand, mm. and uh, so so. I'd imagine there are some people that like add you on social media and they see this and then, mm -hmm. you know, the, the simple minded, young minded logic in the industry is like, I need to get to this person so they can connect me to the next person. Yeah. Connect me to the, mm -hmm. And, um, and sometimes people don't even realize that they move that way. Yeah. Uh, what do you do when you experience people like that? That's, uh, that's been the thing I've, I've dealt with and I've dealt with the whole, copy paste thing it's sure. flattery when people copy your yeah. system yeah, 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 yeah but at the same time it's weird when they were just at your show and mm. they were in the lineup and like things like that have always happened to me i don't take that to heart like but i also don't take it as flattery like i'm saying okay. it's kind of just they saw something that worked and they wanted to try it but the missing ingredient does wind up being me as the host yeah, yeah it starts yeah. at the top with the sit with yeah the, with these shows and they ba they're based off of sound so like a house party the difference is it's based off of making sure everybody's comfortable the sure. whole time. Whereas a show, if the sound is peaking at one moment, it can – because it really fucks with my energy when the shit peaks. Yeah. Like if I'm a guest anywhere, it, like it throws my whole night off if like the bass is too loud or – yeah. Or the rappers are holding like, and that's the thing at the open Way mic. Too close. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you see at the open mic, my hand is on the fucking mixer the whole time. I did notice because and those are my microphones, so I'm aware how they work. Oh wow! And okay. so when when this guy is doing this, I have to like, you know, I can't really enjoy the night at that point. Now I'm working. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's very. That's that. That's what's important. What was the question again? See, I, I well, I was asking. Uh, essentially, you know, when you cut the grass. And oh you, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what, um, what? What do you do when you find that someone like being a snake or it's, trying to use it? I had a very justifiable moments where I could have been a rapper about it. Okay. And then dickhead and what do you, yeah. lashed out screenshots 
shit like that and kind of ruined people's credibility that maybe I built up for them. Sure. And now it's a weird middle ground where people that you've introduced to these people, do you tell them to not chill with them anymore? Mm. Because now is it a loyalty thing mm. with the other people? Mm. Or is it about this situation and should they pick up on it? Like, which route do you want to yeah. go here? And um, I chose to, instead of being angry and go that route, to tell the few people, hey, this is that. Don't fuck with it. Yeah. The other people, I really realized they are going to do what they do. Yeah. Like you can see through that. Yeah. And then there's some people I gave a pass. Mm. I was like, yo, I don't care if you still fuck with them because. Do you, do you still. Um, but it's an interesting have that conversation, though. Um, not about specific things, but when it comes up, that is how I handle it. Yeah. I, it's not shrugged off in a way it gets yeah. handled. Yeah. Like, but, um, but behind doors, you know what I mean? Sure. It's all documented by the way. Like yeah. everything is documented. So these people know better than to say something type of thing. Yeah. So it's all handled, but it's not handled how I want for as far as clout goes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's what's working yeah. in the in the industry. And being an artist and seeing those specific routes, whether it's girl stripping, it's all stripper rappers versus all arguments and beef. And those are the things that get limelight right away. I yeah. completely went the opposite from it. And this was, I'm talking a specific time now in 2019 when, when I started linking with Coco Evolve. That's when I noticed I'm going the complete opposite route, sure. just dropping nonstop art. Yeah. And quality. Like yeah. I'm not worrying about this TikTok dance or this trend or I'm just gonna every every week, every other week drop a podcast or this yeah. or that or this or that and completely didn't focus on it. You, you So that that's the answer. I just didn't focus on it. Once it was there and I knew it, I just did everything else I could to not be on that. I, I was I was ultimately also coming to the conclusion it seems as though those things are at this point in your career, at the bottom of the totem pole, yeah, to, to put your attention. It took a long toward. time, though. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Personally, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it, I, I'm not really from. If I'm being, I'm not really familiar with the mm. rap world. I, yeah. I don't know a lot about that culture. The traditional thing would be like to blow up this guy's spot, yeah. go on Instagram, and like uh, post the that's receipts. Why I and, that's why I did ciphers instead of rap battles. Got it. Because last thing I wanted to do was see two dudes yell at each other. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather hear your story and then tell get it to personal. the camera. Yeah. yeah. Tell us your story to the camera. And yeah. if you want to talk shit, talk shit to the camera. It right. can be taken as it is. Sure. And if somebody feels like they want to battle you, then that'll happen. Sure. But I can't see people who don't who like each other talking shit about each other. That's such a weird part yeah. of the culture to me. Yeah. Which obviously Eminem, Eight Mile, like we all grew up loving that movie. But it is weird. I watched a clip from it the other day, and it is pretty weird a little bit, like the outtake. Yeah. Like, it's very, very weird. Yeah. So. But times are different. Yeah. Times are very different. And just like the ciphers aren't th th because yeah. of the split, splitting of views and things like that. And then even when you say I have 8,000 uh, followers on there with 2,000 subscribers on YouTube because of the subscri subscriptions when they were in 2012, 13, 14, when Google bought it, all the algorithm changed with That's everything. Right. So it's like... I feel like if I have 8,000 followers, they should see my shit in chronological order just like I should see y'all shit. Mm. Who I follow, I want to see. I don't want to see this post from four days ago because it got more likes than what my friend just posted right there. Yeah, the Instagram algorithm is Everything's wild. Everything's horrible. Yeah, yeah, Everything's it's not horrible. Yeah. So in regards to like that, it's like I stopped worrying about the f gaining the follower because like 10K is like what the industry looks for. They mm. want you to have 10K followers and all these things and – I just focused on, like I said, the content, really. Yeah. And it's weird calling it. I'm not – people think you're downgrading your art when you call it content. It gets broken into content. To I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, it's consumable. It's just a word. Yeah. 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 It's just a word for it. So that's what I've been doing, breaking it into content to, yeah. to counteract all of that. Just so that goes back to the laziness. You know what I mean? Like that's that's a lot of work ethic. That's a it lot is. of work. Opus, a Opus AI, you should use it. Have you heard of it? What's that? Uh, allegedly, Opus AI, not sponsored, but you guys can give me a few bucks. <laughs> uh, it, you can take a complete video and throw it in there and it'll give you short form videos. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll just top. But it's got to be complete. So, audio, everything, yeah. mix, edited. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so try it. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of AI. Mm, I'm not either. But uh, I'm against it. It's going to be taking our jobs, dude. Uh, I, I mean, the art jobs. What, it whether, can take regular jobs, but not, whether it does you know, or does not, is we're the ones doing construction still, and yeah. they're doing the paint and the art. What whether it does or does not, I it, it just can't replace soul. Yeah. Period. Yeah, it can't. So um, you you're obviously a high ener- energy individual, and you clearly hold a conviction to create space for people, especially when you're doing your cypress or your open mics to make people feel comfortable mm-hmm. and excited mm-hmm. and get involved. Um, it takes a lot of energy. Like I said, I've seen you in action and it's not, <laughs> it's not, this is not like coffee shop, open mic situation. Yeah, no. You know, mm-hmm. like you're high energy, you got beads of sweat on your face. Like you're mm-hmm. having a good time. Um, w- w- what comes to mind? I imagine you get tired. What comes to mind on the days where you're like, you've just driven out from the shore, you mm-hmm. had a meeting at two, you gotta go have dinner with somebody else, and then mm-hmm. 7.30, you gotta make it to spit. Yeah. If people go on at eight, you have to headline, like, mm-hmm. what's keeping you going, what's happening? Do you wake all, up at like 10 that, o'clock in the morning? Or? No, like it's, it's all that gets me excited. Okay. Like that's what I wanna do. So there are days where I'm like, fuck, I don't feel like doing this, and it feels like a yeah. job. By the way, everything is a job. That's what I mean by laziness. Mm. Like I hate the nine to five thing, but it's obviously necessary for like keeping yourself stable and beyond doing what you want. But when it comes to that, it's it, it's not like this is why I do it. It's to connect with people, and that's and I'm aware that okay, that is the one thing that happened on the day when I posted that, and I got a. First of all, I got way more DMs than I thought. Mm-hmm. And as far as the algorithm goes with likes that you get, mm-hmm. people see your shit from that you haven't see, talked to in 10 years. Yeah. They're just not liking shit. So that changed my perspective on the algorithm one. The sad stories are one thing, but a lot of them were telling me a specific moments that I helped them. Mm. Like specific, like this show, remember this. And we had this conversation on the side and that completely changed. And you're why I'm still making music. You're why I'm here. You're why I'm there. And that, that when I realized, okay, I have way more, if I go, more people will be sad. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, first of all, I can't go before my parents type shit, but, Mm. but I wouldn't do that as far as what I understand I bring to the table, whether it's local or not. Like it's, the grand scheme of things and what your purpose is and all those thoughts I have when I'm mourning, mm. I it just comes back to bringing people together. Is it a sense of uh, what reeled you in? Was it a sense of being needed or was it a sense of contributing to the bigger picture? That. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a... So remember how I said I started rapping because of the reaction I got when I rapped? Yeah. It's not that anymore. It's not about the center of attention. And yeah. it never was because as the host, it was about everybody else. I sure. realized what what I did it for then. But hearing that, like thinking about it now in hindsight as well, I don't get tired because it's literally that's what I'm alive for. Do that's you, why I'm alive. Like literally. That's your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps me alive. Yeah. Yeah. And you feel that every day now. Yeah. 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 So I don't I don't wake up and drink coffee. I don't wake up and Sometimes I'll work out before a day like that, but yeah. I don't eat on these days. I just I fully fast and like take it in. You're there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you ever see yourself, you know, taking a step back from facilitating and and doing more performance and enjoying yourself or? Um, that's, uh, you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Kind that's of thing. that's what they say. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of the. A lot of the events I've gone to, this it's there's always it's the sound isn't right as far as like for the community or like the DJ's vibe is off. There's just something all the time that like doesn't make the nights coincide. So it's not like an and it's not like I'm being asked to like I'm not like I'm getting booked left and right either. Yeah. Which I fucking wish. If that was the case, then yeah. But other than that, it's like I have to be aware of like the local scene because the things that I do, like I said, tend to get copied pretty quick. Yeah. So I have to be different every couple times I do it. I have to switch it. You know, the vibe of the idea of what the event is, the location, because it's all kind of underground stuff that, and that's like what's intriguing about it to me. So as far as taking a step back and having someone host 
an event or my event or me pull up, like I would love that. I would love yeah. it to be that twenty four seven where I could just pull up and play the drums. You want to trust that for person? Hour. Yeah, I want to yeah. trust. Yeah, and um, and as far as that goes, I can't really. This isn't ego, by the way, either. This I really don't see anything else really going besides the organization. Sure. Like, they're the only ones that bring the perfect high energy. Yeah. They're all learning different instruments, how to DJ. They're all doing everything. Yeah. You know, they're the only ones that I really see as a, as a local thing doing shit. Their energy's nuts. Man. Yeah. Otherwise, everything is like a cash grab, which there's not enough money in it to be a cash grab. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> unless you're fucking selling shit out. I, so. t I told CSW when he was on the pod... Uh, that night that I went to Spit Philly it was five dollars. Mm -hmm. I told I was like I would yeah. I twenty bucks, dude. Yeah, twenty bucks. Yeah, twenty bucks. And, and even maybe my, even twenty five. Even my events, they were they're yeah. like ten, fifteen, yeah. twenty. You know, it depends yeah. on how I'm feeling. That was a good show. Yeah, for five mm -hmm. bucks. Mm -hmm. it, it is. It was actually for free. You know, mm -hmm. like straight up. Yeah, you spend yeah. five bucks breathing. If public you're parking air. on the street, you're parking paying more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's crazy. So like that's that's the point though, and yeah. that's that's shown in that. You know, if we were charging thirty five and like that shows a little different in alter like incentive, but but what we're doing at Spit, what we were doing at Eden, what I do, they're all different things. You mm. know what I mean? I just found the way to like connect them and make it work sure because my thing is about connecting the scene so if i'm doing open mics there i'm gonna do open mics down the shore because i don't even know anybody down there yeah and that's where we met which i i thought we met at spit but we met there so that's yeah it, that's yeah interesting yeah we, you know? we met down the shore um i will i will say though it's interesting because you don't you, you wouldn't describe yourself as a promoter would you that's what my dad has been telling me I am. I hate the word though. I, I don't. I don't think you are a promoter. Yeah, I do everything. So it's I'm an orchestrator more. So if, if that even makes sense, but I think you just have people that are on board with what you're doing, yeah. and, and they'll spread the word and they they pull That's up. That's what happens. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't. I don't. Every ever see event you. I've done, I've never paid for ads. I've never gone on the ground and handed out flyers. I've never done any of that. It's always been. These people, I want to come. I know they'll bring a couple people each because people fuck with them. Yeah. And then those people coming together and half of them don't know each other. It's just a perfect mix. Yeah. Yeah. It's with me on top talking shit on the mic all night. Yeah. Like it's, and that's what, I, like, what you said, it is something you learn as a host, as a, as a host from house parties, you learn how to socialize with a lot of different people. Right. We're talking about people doing coke. Mm. shrooms mm. all everything Love in shrooms. one fucking night i do too that's what i meant by like <laughs> have you ever stared at yourself in the mirror specifically when i've yes <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> but, but that uh but that's all coincides with the self as far as like controlling the vibe and making sure everybody's comfortable yeah and that's that's literally what all these events are so by having a couple people trust you that it's going to be a good vibe they're coming so now yeah. when people come to an event that Bugs is involved with, they know the sound's gonna sound good. They know yeah. the people there are gonna be good. Yeah, not you know that's literally, and that's 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 built over years. You know, yeah. with trust from people, from being a genuine person. So when yeah. someone that you bring with you that you introduce to people and that person fucks you over, mm. now it's like they only rock with you because of the strength of me. They don't even know you, mm. you know? So that's where things can get weird in the scene. Mm. And um, the one thing I have to work on, and once I connect things, it's connected, but things that are out of my control with like a month or two later, a beef does happen yeah. here and there. Yeah, it's this, not on you. This girl and this guy. and then, yeah. So now my vision isn't what it was, but at the same time, my vision stops there because this is the point mm. to like rage with each other. So it's about expanding and building it there. But it's a psychological switch I have to make there, which I'm I'm figuring it out as far as the next move. That's sure. why I'm waiting for the next show, because obviously it's going to be a vibe and we're still doing the open mics at spit once a month. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's a that's just a small adjustment. I have to come out to the next one. I think it's uh, next Friday, actually. I, I've just started coming outside. Fuck yeah. Since the new year. So, mm. and, and when I say outside, I mean, I'm home by seven 30. So mm. coming out to spit will be a treat. Fuck yeah. <laughs> and I'm not joking. I'm, I'm, I'm still a homebody. Um, man, I love me some sleep. So, okay. I'm going to ask a question. Uh, mm -hmm. and we can cut it if you don't want to answer it mm. and just know, like, I, I, I just like to preface things. Yeah. Um, so, one of the obvious things for me 
is again i don't know rap culture but i do know that it's a um predominantly black Mm -hmm. you know arena Mm -hmm. what is it like for you i mean you mentioned earlier kind of dovetailing off of it you were like oh i was the wigger of the group you Mm -hmm. know the big the big t-shirt guy Mm mm-hmm what is it like for you being in those spaces? Um, how has it been? I mean, clearly most of your friends group is, Mm -hmm. you know, black. Mm -hmm. Um, what does that, what does that feel like? I mean, do you feel accepted? I mean, obviously you feel accepted. Talk about that. When I was, um, like sixth, seventh and eighth grade is when you see kids kind of start getting their own style versus how their parents are dressing them. Mm -hmm. And it's all according to the music that they listen to. But going into freshman year in high school, I was, uh, Little insecure about my weight. I was chubby, so I wore a bigger shirt. Okay. Like, I wore a shirt in the pool kind of thing. Yep. But when I walked down the hallway at Cherokee, I heard someone say wigger. I never knew what the word was. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't even know. At this point, I didn't even really, like, listen to music like that, but I yeah. liked what, like, rap was and shit like that. But um, when I realized that all the people calling me wigger listened to rock music, mm. it made me hate rock music. Mm. It made me hate the other white kids that I was growing up with mm. and then the people that befriended me were the black kids wow so they protected me and shit from the kids that tried to bully me yeah so it turned into oh i'm a wigger double xl mm. oh sophomore year i'm still a wigger triple xl mm. but i'm the dancer too yeah i'm the white kid dancing so on you the da- leaned into it yeah yeah like it was it was my thing you yeah. know i rebelled against it and having family members like that are racist in ways and things it's like those are other things that you're dealing with at home and different levels so my rebellion stemmed from a whole thing honestly since i was a kid when i first learned about slavery too Mm. everything was so weird to me how they started teaching us slavery like in third grade Mm. fourth grade fifth grade everything was very weird second i learned that and saw that there was one black kid one chinese kid one indian and the rest of the students were white Mm. everything i viewed in school was completely backwards so i dove into a different cultures and shit like that but um but as far as that goes yeah i was i was hated from the jump because of that but i leaned into it as far as and like i said i didn't even start rapping until i was 18. yeah so this is all when i was young and just a dance like a dancer and shit like that yeah but that's what it was and so it's always felt I always hate the, oh, look at white boy. Yeah. I hate that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, I get it. It's a compliment. Sure. But if you have rhythm, you have rhythm. You know, that's what it is. But, um, but yeah, it was always a weird thing like that. Dealing mm-hmm. with, dealing with like the people that are judging you are like your people. Yeah. It's fucking awkward. I, I, I'd imagine. And then all those kids are your friends because yeah. a year later you're selling them weed. Yeah. And it's like, it's so weird, dude. It's really weird. And, and and I imagine it does it I mean it does feel uncomfortable when you're you know the oddball out and people, you know, talk about that in mm-hmm. a way that's not uplifting or in a way that's not inclusive. Yeah, cuz you're not right there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not I'm standing right here, yeah. guys, you know. <laughs> um and so was it was it weird having the family experience at home with some of that racism and then having people that were championing you in life that are black and and Mm -hmm. i'm sure there's a cognitive dissonance where like this is my family they love me they take care of me Mm -hmm. they feel this way but i'm confused because this guy just yeah you know cursed out this white kid for making fun of me yeah on my behalf yeah you know was that weird it's it was a hard dynamic as a 12 year old you know as 11 year old 12 13 year old and um but when I say family, it's like a specific person. I just don't want to specifically name. No problem. But but, it, but family, it doesn't fucking matter. Sure. It's family. Yeah, yeah. But um, the difference between that dynamic was like, I don't want to go to school and I don't want to go home. Wow. I don't want to go to that home. You know, so it makes you become a recluse. Mm. Like you, you chill by yourself. And God damn, thank the Lord for us being the generation of video games and shit like that. Yeah. Because every year I was excited with like a new console, new game. Like it was just something like that that kept me as a kid. Because in my neighborhood it was spread out and the kids weren't my age. So not only was I ostracized as that, my neighborhood was like (laughs) there was nothing to do. Yeah. So I raised myself with the fucking TV and video games and survived off cereal, you know, because they they were working, you know. What's your go-to cereal you like? Oh, damn. 
first thing that comes to mind as a kid is Fruity Pebbles. Okay, word. But Captain Crunch, I love, but I hate how you can't eat a lot of it. Because, like, it fucks the roof of your mouth up. Yeah, it you cuts you up, bro. You I just it. had uh, Fruity Pebbles last night. They have a Fruity Pebbles marshmallow now. You oh, have. I did see that. I it's, was going to get to that. Nuts. What I my, my actual favorite one, though, was the Rice Krispies that were chunked together. Do you remember those? No. It was a purple box. It was Rice good. Krispies, but it was, like, chunks of actual Rice Krispies. With marshmallow in it. No, just just Rice Krispies. Really? Oh, yeah, well, that's how you make it. But you know how they, like, it's just that you can make your own Rice Krispies? Yeah, yeah. It was chunked together. Okay. Like, yeah, that shit was fucking fire. I'll have to try to find it. It sounds good. Mm, I, was, I was high as shit last night, and I <laughs> fucked up a big ass bowl. That's why I don't get it anymore, because I'll eat a box. I'll eat it right there. Yeah. I'll eat the whole box right there. Well, that's why you need roommates, because, mm, cause, true. see, my guilt in the back of my mind will go, oh, you know, somebody else might want some cereal, mm. you know, me and my, my <laughs> roommates, we all share food, so <laughs> it's a communal thing. But, um, yeah, so... so that's that's really cool because it seems like you found some escapism through mm -hmm. the video gaming and the in the movies mm -hmm. and the stuff like that. But yeah, but it was it was never artistic. It was um I always liked like videos and shit, like sure. editing, like family shit, like or not family shit, I would just shoot shit and edit it together. But um but yeah, it was never like a uh, as far as like that goes with that specific situation cuz um we're not our family's not religious they never forced it and like none of that so mm -hmm. it was all kind of like complete modern kid yeah but um but that family member actually got very spiritual not religious mm. and looked at this as their life lesson kind of thing mm. and actually completely flipped so because of the life that i rebelled against somewhat spiritually like flipped my family member into understanding what i understood mm. and saw so whereas like there's these um figures that you look up to you learn this from them which is not what you don't want to be but they learn that complete opposite like that's major growth whereas everything that i felt as a child is completely forgiven yeah a million percent because yeah. of how drastic that switch was yeah which is you know it, it takes some time for people to understand something like that. And and I say, like, they tried to bully me in school. It's because I, I didn't feel bullied. Yeah. I felt like they were learning from their parents. Mm. They were listening to their parents. Because when you're a white kid and your family has a football game dinner and there's 30 white guys there that are fucking 50 years old. Yeah. 10 years ago. You're listening to all, all the shit they're and saying. And they think they're saying funny jokes. Yeah. Yeah. And they're not. Yeah. And who's going to step up to say it? Me, a 12-year-old yeah. kid with a big shirt. And everyone will laugh it off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's a joke. Yeah. Like, you need to get, like, that type of shit. So that's, like, I've always been, like, a a defender of morality, I guess. And that's what I've been aware of very, since a very, very young age. You're all about the third, underdog. Yeah, since third grade when I learned about the slavery and shit. Like, Such a weird age to learn about. Yeah, dude. They gave me, they gave us a, a, a like a thing to color in because it was about coloring and art and like a, and the history of art. But it was like it was like a tea party thing kind of. But it was a ship and we had to col paint, color in everything. But I colored everybody different colors, and the teacher said I didn't understand the the, the thing. Okay. It was because I was supposed to draw in like the number one is this person, yeah. number two is this, and yeah. I just colored everything a different color, which didn't fit the roles of the lesson. Yeah. Yeah, that and here you that are. sat with me. Yeah, yeah. that but, might that yeah that that sat with me, dude. Yeah, that's what it is. And here you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. I mean, it's a testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to switch gears here. Um, how you feeling? Good. Feeling good. Yeah, chill. I uh, I have two quotes I that I have here, and uh, I want to I want to read one of them. Mm -hmm. It's from your Instagram page, mm -hmm. so it's public. I want to read it to you, and I want you to tell me what it means. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this: when I was reading it earlier, I just heard today, a clip of the audio. I was like, "Oh shit!" Uh, <laughs> also, if you feel comfortable, just to let you know what's coming down the pipe. Yeah. If you feel comfortable, I do have a, a tight beat preloaded here. If you, mm -hmm. if you feel led to, you know, if you want to do a couple bars, maybe, maybe, maybe. we don't, we don't have to. Yeah, 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 and yeah. like I said, if you feel mm -hmm. comfortable, but mm -hmm. you know, when I have a good rapper in my presence, I want to. Facts. I want something in it for me, you know? Wait, wait. All right, so I'm going to read this, and I want you to tell me what it means. And when I read it earlier, uh, the last line shook me. Mm -hmm. I got it. Mm -hmm. It says, I'm done hanging out with this brain. Thoughts eat me alive by the minute. In parentheses, it says, my favorite flavors at least. Insecurities are meditation, the icing on top. 
Daily cravings hold me down by the need for stimulation. At my deathbed, it's tasty, with an ice cream cone in my hand and a smile. Is this happiness or madness? Watching my reflection do the same, routines I know in the end will give me the disease. Why am I so embarrassed for what has happened to me? Why do I feel shame for the love for the loving love? How could something so sweet be the leading cause of death? Okay, yes, I'll take the cherry on top. <laughs> what were you saying there? Damn, I'm about to cry. Damn. Hmm. That's a crazy dynamic of uh where I was. I guess I'm kind of still there. But um I've always battled with what love itself is and how to express it as far as romantic relationships go. Yeah. Um my biggest fear is being controlling and that stems from my parents. So my expression of love is very, not love bombing, but I just, I love you, I love you, I love you, suffocation. Yeah. Like, I love you so much, mm. like like that, and I'm very aware of that, so I, I reel that in, but why am I ashamed of loving someone so much to the degree of that, and weighing the lines of protection versus control are very thin, especially in today's age. So I also have a very, very bad issue with cookies. I eat cookies all fucking day. So I'm very body dysmorphic with how I work out and mm. my diet and about loving myself, yeah. looking in the reflection. And then if I don't love myself, how can I love someone else? All those kinds of things. And it's all tied into itself. So. I'm damn near giving myself diabetes with these cookies I'm eating every fucking day. Mm. I'm giving myself the heartbreak when I overthink the love that is already there. And then you have to think way beyond the dynamic that this person that you love loves how they love mm. based off of their childhood relationship with their parents. And sometimes you're teaching people how to love and you don't even know if your love is right. Yeah. If you're doing it the right way. Yeah. And that perspective of, is it worth it? What's the point? Why are we even trying? Just turns into, all right, I am down for the ride. Mm. Just give me the cherry on top. Like, I'm down for the ice cream. Mm. If it's going to be diabetes, I don't care because it tastes good. And I have a smile. Yes. Yeah. And the, the, the line is treating I it like a drug yeah. versus treating it like love. And everyone loves drugs and everyone loves, you know, that feeling, that dopamine release that you get when you're with someone you like or yeah. when they text you or when even just a simple like on Instagram, it doesn't have to be them. It's or, better than a drug. It is. Yeah. And, and that's like to be overbearing with love to the suffocating point that you just want love so much like a drug mm. to the point where you don't want to go to work. You don't want to do an event mm. you don't want to make a song you just want to look at that person in the eyes mm. and sit in bed all day mm. so waking up beyond 5 30 no let's not go to bed till 5 30 got it completely you know a got different it. perspective so it's my fear of loving incorrectly that's what it is but i'll still love if i can <laughs> this isn't really about closure I want any form of power over the past that you have burned into me. I don't want closure for the sake of feeling better. I want closure so you feel worse. For you to confront my perception of the pain that was endured. See, this isn't really about closure. This is about control. Talk about it. Coming to grips with a relationship going where it goes sometimes and trust and loyalty why did you do this to me it doesn't matter i don't want closure on that on those terms mm. i want to fuck you again mm. i want you to feel it mm. that's good i don't want closure yeah there's no such thing 
I teared up a little bit listening <laughs> to that story. Um, I'm just holding it back the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Can I can I connect with you for a second? Mm-hmm. Um, I can relate. I can relate to this specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want closure for the sake of feeling better. I want closure so you can feel worse. Yeah. I have a high vengeance level. And, uh, yeah, and I'm not revengeful either. So to yeah. be there and to like feel it and do like I didn't do anything revengeful. Sure. But to feel it and express it is yeah. that's a whole different it, thing. It, well, so to, to my response to everything you said is uh, I experienced th- this deep pain yeah. for the first time at the end of 2019, mm-hmm. beginning of 2020, when I first moved here, I lost a meaningful relationship. Yeah. Um, and it, it, uh, it stripped me of who I thought I fucking was mm-hmm. and, and, and not in a way like I gave all my energy to this person. Don't get me wrong. For the first mm-hmm. six months, I was, I was guzzling bottles of wine every day. Yeah. Like I was, I was distraught. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually that sadness turned into, I want you to feel what I feel. Mm-hmm. And um, and I didn't get closure from that relationship. Yeah, I, I wasn't. It, in fact, I, I had a, there was a phone call, and the phone call was like, "Let's check in in thirty days." And I called in thirty days, and my number was blocked, mm-hmm. and it hurt. And um, you, I just, I just, I just wanted. I didn't. I didn't want to try to win her back. Yeah. I just wanted to say, can we see each other and just acknowledge that it didn't work yeah. and um and also acknowledge that it was good yeah it was good it can't it, just be gone yeah like how is this you yeah know? and yeah. and 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 not being able to have the ability to go to say that just just to not be heard mm-hmm. i appreciate your vulnerability especially you know with putting out something like this on your social media because it pulls back the curtain to what I'm not going to say all men, but I think especially what creative men Mm -hmm. go through because we're creators, because we uh, use our feelings to create. We use these experiences that we have that are translated into feelings, which then we transmit into creation. Mm -hmm. Everything in our life runs through that filter of like, yeah. you know emotion and a lot a lot of i'm thankful for finding it yeah when i was 18 yeah because a lot of people don't have that ex- expression or hobby whatever you want to call it a lot of people don't have it and that's why i mean instead of lashing out when it's justifiable yeah like some people go aren't even artists but they'll go personal and be like yeah they'll post a meme that's related to okay i know you're about to break up with your girlfriend yeah you can't do that shit yeah but as an artist i'm able to paint my pain and you guys think it's just a shiny little thing i made yeah. nope this is how i feel right now yeah and that's why i'm posting it that's when the things i post that's what i mean like i kind of make so much fucking music that if that's how i feel i make it i'll do a live performance of it and i'll drop it you know and um other than that i'm like i'm just building up like a, i have my catalog is ridiculous do you still feel this way um specifically no not about that person okay um that person actually made it up to me more than anybody in my life ever has or could Mm. and i accepted it and decided to accept it and things are great that's awesome yeah so as far as like a situation like that when that moment of like needing closure there's someone else yeah that's what it is. Yeah. And coming to grips with that and loyalty and when that's what it is, dude, that's that's kind of, you know, so the relationships with I don't think I was ready for that. Yeah, this like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the things that the things yeah. that you like really have to swallow and like soon is now it ties into the control thing that I talk about with love and um and there's a reason I keep things like zoomed in on me or specific, like as far as shots like that. But um, when it comes to control and like where the person's at, this whole we were talking about on the way in here, like the housing market and yeah. how the shit is so fucked up. Yeah. Um, splitting a household, even our parents, like the dad going to work all day and the mom staying at home, like our parents' parents, they're both working when we were young. But um, 
the family dynamic isn't there to that degree, and it's something I've always hated as a child, the fact that, like, you and your love spend 10 hours of the day around complete other different groups of people yeah. that we both don't know. And you, there's, like, there's work husbands and, like, shit like that and wives. Like, when you said that, my heart dropped. That shit uh, is, dude, it's, it's, it's real. real. It's, it's real. real. So when there's... It's temptation. It's natural. I get it. Cool. She's pretty. He's hot. Whatever. But the loyalty and that thing, that can't happen if people are separating like that daily. Mm. Mm. To then come home with those stresses, mm. use each other as a therapist mm. or that, not even, and then sleep and do it again. That whole system doesn't work to me. Yeah. But What's then, the solution? That's what I was just going to say. But then... You have to like imagine a life that you would like. You have to put yourself in these scenarios. Okay, if I just had all the money in the world just to travel with my John, that's what we would do. We would just go to different locations that uh, we, you know, it's it's just it's just a money thing at that point. Yeah. But then you can't not account for situations that might happen at these places because yeah. now you're going to places where money's involved. Yeah. And that's the idea, though. If everybody, I had this poem I wrote. If currency was kindness, I removed it. And it's basically like, it sounds like a social credit score system now. I wrote this like seven years ago. But the idea is you hold a door for somebody, $5 goes in your account. Mm. You smile at somebody, $5 goes in your account. Mm. And that's, if currency was kindness, we would all be rich even if we were faking it. But now the idea is, okay, now we're all rich. We're all so rich because we're all so nice to each other. We have everything we want. It's it's still going to turn into some form of jealousy because I put myself in this thought experiment as far as imagine the world where you have everything you want. Say it's like a 10 acre land. You got a moat, you got the jacuzzi, you got everything you want. Yeah. But when you drive down the road, you look in your neighbor's yard and you see they have a trampoline mm. and you don't have a trampoline. The difference is with this concept, you don't have to take theirs. Mm. You can just go buy one or be nicer or be nicer. Yeah. And yeah. And get your own. So that's the whole concept. But once you have everything you want, the girl, the money, da da da, now you start traveling. And so when you say, what's the solution? That temptation is going to come in different forms once everything else is solved. So, like, that's the spot where I'm doing more thought experiments on as far as, like, what is the solution? It's internal. Because, yeah, because it's, yeah. it's not control, it's more about making sure they're safe. But how can you make sure they're safe when she's serving in the middle of the city at 2 a.m. Mm. and you're working your job and you can't, you know, so the where are you, text me when you get home, da da da. Yeah. I want to know when you're going down the street. Yeah. It's not controlling. Anything can happen. Anything can happen anywhere. So, like, me coming to grips with that kind of love is controlling to a lot of people. Mm. But what it is is love. Mm. And it's how I express it. Mm. Okay, you're home, baby. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know you're home. Yeah. I'm on my way to go get donuts. I'll be home in time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's that's what, like... That had to have been a real conversation. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. Okay. It, it is. That was everything a very specific... I, <laughs> everything I say is like donuts and cookies, dude. <laughs> donuts and cookies are my issue. Yeah. So I, I, but I used ice cream in the analogy. Yeah, yeah. With the poem. Um, so we got to start to to wrap up a bit, but mm -hmm. I, I want to affirm you and say... Um, Your willingness to be vulnerable, I think, is the thing that makes you separate, you know, and, and, and it's not always the goal to be separate. And we know mm -hmm. that sometimes the goal is to be together. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for your mission, there there sometimes needs to be this uh, separation so that you can move throughout a sea of people that are all sort of doing the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, Um when you have a message as in, as important as yours. Um, so I, I appreciate your authenticity and, and that's what wins that that's what, that's what takes you, you know, to the next level, not just in your career. Cause I'm not talking about career. Yeah, I'm just yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. in your just own life, personal yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I really appreciate us talking, being able to talk about, you know, the relationship stuff. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't have guy friends that I can talk to about yeah. that. So, it, it, it feels healing. And again, mm -hmm. that story connected with me. And mm -hmm. now I feel less shame knowing that people are loving the same way mm -hmm. and that there, there are people that are 
uh, dealing with some of the same things. Yeah, I feel you with that. And for and, sure. and and I'll say too, it's uh, it takes a special person to really look yourself in the mirror when you're aware of the things that could or could not be shortcomings that you have to fix. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to convince ourselves that the things that we do that cause people pain are justifiable because of our own conviction, our own feeling, but mm -hmm. it takes a special person to know when I need to pull back or at some point I cannot keep telling myself the same story. I cannot keep telling myself yeah. that I do this because of this, yeah. or I am a byproduct of this because of this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it, it seems like you have a grip on that. It seems like you are someone and it clearly comes through in your art and in your music. It seems like you're someone who, uh, you know, acutely understands that. So mm -hmm. I appreciate you, um, sharing that story. I wanted to thank you for seeing me, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, Thank you for showing yourself. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Um, I wanted to just share a clip because we've, I think we've opted out of doing a freestyle. Yeah. I can rap. You <laughs> Throw a boom bap, John, on. All right. You uh, we'll, got a boom bap? Let, we'll find a, a boom bap. Um, you can pick any, John. Cool, because I was going to play one of uh, your clips from Instagram because I just really want people to understand mm -hmm. who you are. Um, let's see. Je uh, Joey Badass. J Dilla Boom Bap 90s type beat? Yeah, see what that's up. Uh, let's see what's up. There might be ads. I don't have plenty. 100% free with TurboTax. Just mute it. Roughly Just mute the ad. I, uh... Yeah, I'm really glad you're here, man. Mm -hmm. This is no, this is a great comment. Thank is, you so is, much. This man. is fucking fun, and we should we should do it again. And uh, yeah, and you gotta come on mine. Yeah, I appreciate. I was about I was about to invite myself, but I don't like to be intrusive. Nah, it's my yeah, least nah, favorite yeah, quality yeah. of any human being <laughs> to be intrusive. Uh, the time of this video is 4:20, so it is meant to be. Okay. Uh, all right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's see what it sounds like. Yeah. Hmm. I like it. <laughs> Shout out you. Yeah. Check one lights out. I've been receding in phase during the week and the hate. I've been receiving the way. I see the reason why they want to keep reaching our face until I'm peeking our face until we're even our race into a space of empty void with no choice. In your voice, I heard it all. The despair, the annoyance I done caused. It was me all along. So maybe if I smoke more, I will see through this fog. I'm lost, but it's all because it cost what I wanted back. They saw it when I attacked, that I was the one off track. Crazy thing is that I wasn't wrong for, for none of that. Justify killing half of existence with just a snap. You wonder why I come alive now when I see these demons mad. He's a fan of copy pasting everything cause he pretends. Needs another vein to suck the blood out like these leeches and no it don't end. Once you prove the point is when the tears will shed. Cause they the best at proving points without confessing. Testing all the patience you had bottled up with venting. Maybe it is you and you're the problem that's been sketchy. Nah, I know for a fact you're all out to fucking get me. So here's the get back. Had to fade away, I'm talking step backs like Kobe and no Thray. When I hit the wet rap, she doesn't text back. I get mad. Tell me who does it. New timelines are stressing out when I knew that she wasn't. Stupid ones will use assumptions, cruising through for something. Who was bluffing? Was it me? I'm here for your concussion. You wasn't, and now we can see that you were sweet like munchkins. Smashing skulls in my imagination like them pumpkins. I stomached all the pain alone during the summer. And you wonder why I'm cool with all this thunder. <laughs> Yo, I said I needed it for seeds that went deep within to keep it grip. Planted to the center of eternity for evening trips. Plead the fifth. Only when I have a chance to cheat a split. You needed him. We believe the demons Chillin' where she lives Does that mean she's a witch or we be witched? Leave it to belief to him The truth it isn't hidden It's beneath the shit that we keep in So don't ask me why I keep this dim Cause you can see the end in one instant So please do not pretend for one minute Cause I'm exhausted from it all you see The more I try to fight the tides The more it brings me under seas These nuts grow when I'm mean I mean, fuck you, I'm being me I mean, I grit the teeth when I get in between It's like I'm biting down seduction that I didn't need you full of shit, stop acting like you ain't legit Cause in that mirror is a king And every single time you sing, I hear a ding Don't judge by the fences or even by how they scream Cause all of these illusions bring nothing but confusion I'm used to it though, dancing along with the foe Stepping all on my toes, tripping I should've listened to mama Ten years old, she said you can't have friends But that's not what the foe, vibing and weaving I was just bouncing off all the ropes I found it, I mean my soul, and I doubt I'll let it go I done came way too close to a life that I chose To go back to my foe, that my scent there is old But I know that I done grown with the flow when it was old, motherfucker. Bugs, bitch. That was incredible.
Folks, thanks for being on the podcast, man. Hi, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Pleasure. Yeah.